You're watching Time Warner Cable News all morning. Good Friday morning. It is now one minute past the hour and we hope you're having a good start to your Friday. The weather will definitely warm up today. Meteorologist Matt Morano is standing by with your weather on Juan's forecast. A Charlotte area author is waiting on her first book to be published and she's only five years old. Coming up, we'll tell you what she's writing about and why she's already working on a second book release. We'll be right back. You can call them a triple threat, giving twice the dosage. They were co-captains of the best cheerleading squad in the country. They are the best in the classroom at Dudley High, and they're quite possibly the most active teenagers in the Greensboro community. Time Warner Cable News reporter J.B. Ricks introduces us to this week's Scholar Athletes of the Week, Michaela and Mariah Moyer. We're going to finish out the weekend on a warm and sunny note, but more rain is in store for the work week. We'll have the details coming up next in your weather on the ones. It is now 31 minutes past the hour and time for a check of our weather on the ones forecast. Nice day, kind of sort of a little cloudy out there though. Yeah, a little clouds uh, beginning to move in. We had a beautiful day yesterday. Yes. Uh, temperatures similar today, but we're going to see some scattered thunderstorms rolling in this afternoon. Great. But, but here's the good news. The weekend looks great. It'll okay, so I can ditch the umbrella. Yeah, the weekend, you don't need it at all. Okay, so, good. But, uh, Two people were killed yesterday after police chase in Shelby. Coming up next on Time Warner Cable News, more on the man police arrested and the string of charges he's now facing. North Carolina's education superintendent will be in the Charlotte area today to take a closer look at Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. Dr. June Atkinson is scheduled to visit three CMS schools to learn about different programs and partnerships within the school system. A Charlotte author has written a book and is just waiting for it now to go to press, but the difference is she's only five years old. She says she wanted a book that reflected her and her friend's diverse racial background and taught others about her religion. Time Warner Cable News reporter Vanessa Leon sat down to learn more about this young author. From the cockpit to the fire lines next week on Time Warner Cable News, we'll show you the training the Charlotte-based unit of the Air National Guard needs to fight some of the most destructive fires across the country. A historical day for millions of Catholics around the world. Popes John the 23rd and John Paul II are now saints. Current Pope Francis canonized them this morning at the Vatican with Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th. Time Warner Cable News reporter Chris Williams is outside the Sacred Heart Cathedral in downtown Raleigh with more. Chris. Well, Rob, Governor Pat McCrory will thank Sergeant Kyle White privately here at the National Guard Readiness Center a little later this morning. Time Warner Cable News anchor Elise Roberts joins us now from the newsroom with more Elise. Yeah, Rob, authorities hope to find new evidence to solve the cold case of Judith McMurray and try and bring some closure to her family. Well, Rob, first it was the Panthers, and now the Charlotte Bobcats are headed to the playoffs this season. And fans, if they're lucky, could fill the seats here. It was a message of frustration. A message of concern. A message demanding change. Protesters lined up outside of Duke Energy headquarters in Charlotte Thursday morning in solidarity to show why they're upset with the utility provider. They wait until the accidents happen, and accidents happen shouldn't be an acceptable excuse anymore. Uh, they've, we, they've stopped legislation and lawsuits um, over the past several years um, when they could have been addressing this before they had an accident. A number of environmentalists, faith-based groups, and concerned citizens say February's coal ash spill is the primary reason for this latest demonstration. People were scared to drink water for about a week or two, um, and that just affects people's lives, their kids, and diseases can come from that um, depending on the amount of coal ash that gets polluted into the rivers. Protesters say they hope to attract the attention of Duke Energy officials and gain more support from Duke Energy customers. They say the company needs to make some changes and it needs to make them now. There is a whole agenda to take away the hard-won victories of the environmental community, of others, to protect themselves, and they're doing it with money we can see and we can't see, and that has got to stop. Company officials say they understand the concerns and take full responsibility for the spill. They say the company is a work in progress and has a long road ahead. But these protesters say the company is stalling and they want Duke Energy to do more to better protect its customers. In Charlotte, Elise Roberts, Time Warner Cable News.
these cyclists are ready for the ride of their lives. There's no word to describe it. 48 cyclists will bike 60 miles a day for three days, all to benefit people with disabilities. It can be a challenge, yes, but it can be a lot of fun and a lot of memories. The annual 180-mile trek goes from Monroe to the north coast of Myrtle Beach. The people that come back year after year after year do it because of how they feel um, while they are helping somebody else. This year marks the 15th year for Cycle to the Sea. Every spring, the community effort brings together an array of people from across the Carolinas, each with a unique story. Being a, a disabled athlete myself, after being injured during Desert Storm in the Marine Corps, um, I thought it would be a neat opportunity to meet other disabled athletes. This is Aaron Harper's first time participating in the event, but he's no stranger to long rides. 500 miles was the longest ride. Athletes ride on hand cycles or tandem bikes, an effort they say isn't for the weak or the weary. Initially, you think 60 miles a day is, is not really that much, but when you're helping the other athletes push up the hills, you got to, from their perspective, they're basically doing bench pressing, you know, using these, these cycles, and they're bench pressing all the way up the hill, and we get to use our legs, so it's uh, quite a bit different. So it's going to be a, a great experience for them and then a, a great opportunity for us to support them. Many of the participants have trained for months to be a part of the three-day effort, an effort they say is the epitome of strength, teamwork, and determination. In Monroe, Elise Roberts, Time Warner Cable News.